a surgical cure for nystagmus. Lysinski anterior extirpation. Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Lingler, pictured here to the right with Dr. Jeremiah Tao and Dr. Robert Sinski. I'm the director of eye muscle surgery and Dr. Tao of orbit and plastic surgery at the University of California, Irvine's Gavin Herbert Eye Institute, located in Irvine, California. This report details our initial experience with an operation introduced by Dr. Sinski in his pursuit of a surgical cure for nystagmus. Dr. Sinski, a noted eye surgeon, pioneer of modern cataract surgery techniques, inventor and humanitarian, is the driving force behind this pursuit. And without his dedication, leadership and support, none of this would be possible. I have been performing eye muscle surgery for over 30 years, and it wasn't until I understood Dr. Sinski's vision that I was able to offer my patients the kinds of dramatic improvement you are about to see. In 2002, in the journal Strabismus, Dr. Robert Sinski and Dr. Eshte described an aggressive new approach to surgically correct the uncontrolled eye movements in the patient with nystagmus. Dr. Sinski asserted that the condition could be best and safely addressed by removing the offending muscles. It's absolutely critical that the correct techniques are used to remove the right amount of muscle to prevent its reattachment, or the procedure will fail to quiet the eyes, as do all the other commonly used nystagmus surgical procedures today. One of the patients from that report is pictured on the left with the typical uncontrolled eye movements of nystagmus. On the right, you see how still the eyes are two years after the Sinski procedure and, and amazingly, ten years later, the eyes are still quiet. One year ago, I was caring for the 17-year-old showing a residual nystagmus that I had failed to control after two more popular procedures for his nystagmus. I showed him the video from Dr. Sinski's patient and asked if he was interested in my performing the Sinski procedure on him. He said yes. The video and graphic data you'll see was obtained with a sophisticated module consisting of goggles equipped with infrared cameras to simultaneously record eye movements and then apply a software analysis program to depict and calculate characteristics of nystagmus. Amanda Gerling, certified orthoptist, is the specialist directing the recording process in all patients. Here are the pre- and post-operative recordings of my first patient. In the upper left, following traditional nystagmus surgery, there's a persistent shaking. Below him are the video recordings from the infrared cameras during his eye analysis preoperatively. In the lower right now, you will see him 10 months post-op with a marked improvement of the nystagmus on the recording. Above that, you'll see his clinical condition. It has allowed his vision to improve up to 2030 from 2050 pre-op. That not only improves his self-image, but qualifies him for a driver's license in California. Note how quiet his gaze is now, 10 months post-op. Graphically, these results are depicted with the recording apparatus. In the first tracing, the nystagmus is depicted. Deflections of the waveform up are movements of the eyes to the right and downward to the left. So the image on the left shows the right, left, right, left shaking preoperatively. At three months and ten months after the Sinski procedure, these waveforms are markedly dampened. Not only are the eyes quieted in straight ahead seeing, but this graph also illustrates how the accuracy of the eyes to track a target 
has also improved for activities like driving and reading. On the left, his eye movement tracings reveal the right-left shaking as he tries to follow a target depicted by the green line. Now postoperatively, with the nystagmus dampened, his tracking has dramatically improved in its accuracy. The young adult is depicted on the left before the procedure and on the right after the procedure, showing how her spontaneous eye position has been quieted. Although these young adults are clear victories for me, the major impact this procedure may have is in its potential to provide the best opportunity for children with this affliction to develop the best possible vision and the best possible self-image. This young girl, six years of age, came to us with her parents, saying they were told her vision was poor and would get worse. She was given a white cane, was told to learn braille, as she would never lead a normal life. These videos illustrate the life-changing impact this procedure can have. First, in the upper left, we see the uncontrolled nystagmus. In the upper right now, only six weeks after surgery, the marked dampening effect of the surgery is seen. In the lower left, a repeat video of her pre-op clinical condition is seen. And in the lower right, at six weeks post-op, she now remarkably has a near vision of 2030 and distance vision of 2080, improved from her 2150 preoperative. At three months, we see a lovely young girl with eye tracings to the right, illustrating the dramatic change in eye control before and after the procedure. At three months now, she and her family can look forward to a normal life. She can attend regular schools, forget the braille, she rides her bike, she's put away the white cane. I have to wonder how much better might her vision have been had I had the chance to operate even younger. So we are going in even younger. Here is a two-year-old girl with pronounced nystagmus, complicated by a marked horizontal and vertical misalignment of the eyes. Her preoperative movements are depicted by the infrared cameras in the lower left. On the right now, in as little as two weeks postoperatively, her eyes appear dramatically quieter. She can now undergo the regular and continued care for optimal vision development and eye alignment. What I have observed in the seven patients we have operated thus far, and you've seen three of them, is that number one, young or old, parents of children or the young adult patients themselves all appreciate an improvement in their clinical appearance. Most patients will require secondary treatment for the misalignment of the eyes that accompanies nystagmus. This procedure can be done regardless of any prior surgery performed. And the real impact of this procedure may well lie in its potential to improve the lifelong vision potential of patients when performed early in life. We have to thank Dr. Sinsky for his vision and stubborn dedication to innovation in ophthalmology for giving us a new future in nystagmus surgery. In my opinion, this may well be the procedure of choice in infantile nystagmus. It will certainly offer hope for the young adults afflicted with the stigma of uncontrolled eye movement. And the results I have achieved in these patients is significantly better than any previously described surgery for nystagmus, including the Keston-Baum-Anderson operation and its many variations. Thank you. And for more information, please visit the website or feel free to send me a personal email. Thank you.